Hi, it's Lindley Oz, and welcome to another episode of Truth Hunters, because then you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So we're coming down close to the end of my End Times Arc ARC series that I'm doing, which is all leading us to the opening of the seals. That's where each one of these videos is eventually going. And I honed in on a very interesting passage from the book of Psalms. And you are going to be amazed at all of the end times symbolism and meaning to this passage that I share. This is from my Monday night Zoom teaching. We just got done with it a little bit ago. Every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, I do a live Zoom meeting. So that's where this message is coming from. A lot of interesting input and thoughts and questions by the people who attended the meeting. At the very end, you may wanna stay and listen to what they have to say. But you guys, this is what digging in the Bible is about for the truth. Many of us read the Bible and we just read it on the surface, but it's time for us to really get into the meat and potatoes of the Bible and to begin to grasp and understand the real teachings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to really understand where we are at in Bible prophecy. Many of us have been relying on being spoon fed for way too long. And that is one of the biggest problems aside from taking things out of context. That's one of the biggest problems is people relying on teachers because many false teachers have gone out into the world teaching a false apostate Jesus and a false apostate message. So in these various parts that I'm doing, I'm building the foundation so that by the time we get to the opening of the seals, you're going to have a much deeper understanding and you will grasp what it is that is actually going on. Forget the false teachers and forget all the false teachings that we have been taught. We're strictly studying this, doing word studies. We're not using someone's study guide. We're not using videos of other people's or books or even commentaries. We're just using the Bible to do these studies and discussing what the words mean. And you will be amazed when you start doing word studies at what the words in Hebrew mean, what they mean in Greek. And you can just do a deep word study and go deeper and deeper. And I'm telling you, it is just massive what you will begin to uncover. So let's go ahead and get into the study. Before we do that, I just want to remind you, I am mostly 100% viewer supported. So if you feel led or moved to sow a gift into this ministry, you can do so via my PayPal or the PO box. The information is on the screen and beneath the video in the video description. I do rely on your support to continue sharing the truth with people all over the world. This is my full-time ministry. I don't know what's been going on since before Christmas. I have had, you know, an increase at certain times, but overall the financial support to this ministry is down. I know that I've been putting out a lot of hard hitting messages. Maybe I'm making people mad. I don't know, but the support has been way down. I will not alter my messages or change what the word of God says for reasons of money or support. I won't do that. I can't do that. So if that's the reason, I just believe God will provide. But if you feel led or moved to support, again, you can do so via my PayPal or the PO box. If you can't, don't feel guilty or bad. If you really want to help, you guys can all help by sharing these videos all over the place because I am heavily censored. Okay. So help people see these messages by sharing them as much as you can. It will help these messages reach more people, which the devil is trying to hinder through the fact I'm shadow banned. Also, don't forget to download the free app for my free show, Truth Hunters. It's available on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire. There's also a free app for any Android or Apple device, and it's available to you on the web. Again, that's Truth Hunters. It does cost me money, but I have made it available to all of you at no charge. So it is viewer supported. Again, that's Truth Hunters. 
As a backup, I'm also on Rumble. So go on to Rumble and I think you search playlists or something like that. Not videos. Let's see, there's only two options. There's videos and something else. I think it's playlists, but I'm not sure. Search Truth Hunters. There's two of me. They are both me. I don't understand it, but subscribe to the one that has the most subscribers. And again, that's on Rumble. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my website, truthhuntersshow.com. Again, that's truthhuntersshow.com. That way you never miss an update or a video since I'm censored on YouTube. People are unsubscribed all the time and everything like that. You will never miss an update when I post a video. Well, that about wraps it all up. God bless all of you. And thank you so much to those of you who have been faithfully sewing into this ministry. I genuinely appreciate it. Whether you're giving to me on Patreon or through the mail, the regular post office, check or money order or PayPal, whatever. I want you to know, I genuinely, genuinely appreciate your help. So I don't get to write everybody and thank them. So I want you to know, I know who each and every one of you are, and I am genuinely appreciative for your support. Well, here's the message for tonight. Very deep, very interesting. You may want to take notes, but I pray that this message blesses you abundantly. And it's so important, you guys, that we search the truth for ourselves. And the truth is God's word. Amen. We need to begin to really search and dig deeply for ourselves so that we will know the truth because the truth will set us free. I'm going to share my notes on the screen with you. And I've got all the verses that we will need to look at separately on the screen in case we need to, you know, there's some verses in this, in my notes that I want to pull up to show you guys something. So when you see my note page that I'm going to be reading from, don't feel overwhelmed. <laughs> don't feel over. It's just my notes. So um, let me go ahead and share the screen with you. See which one is my notes. Here we go. The one with yellow highlights all over it. Okay. There's that is um, Psalm 74, one through nine. All right. So I probably should not have gone and did a word study, but it's really interesting. And we already read this passage last Monday. So Psalm 74, one through nine, again, we're talking about several things. We're talking about the fire of God, the fire of his judgment, the deliverance of his people in the midst of tribulation. And also we've been discussing to the cloud of God that comes down and how we're all caught up together and meet the Lord and the spirit. So we're talking about all these things kind of at once here and the heart as the temple of God, which I still have those heart pictures pulled up on the screen. Cause we're going to go back and look at those again, especially for those who weren't here during those uh, teachings to see that, that the heart, the human heart is in the shape of the sacred name of God, the El Shaddai, uh, the sheen, which is El Shaddai. Okay. It says, Oh God, why have you rejected us forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? So here in this context, his anger is representing his judgment, the judgment on his people, which is the first half of tribulation, the opening of the seals, judgment on the house of God. And you can read about that. And Peter it talks about judgment begins in the house of God. Why does your anger? So notice it's not his wrath. It's his anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture. Remember your congregation. Now, the word congregation here is very interesting. It means gathering multitude, witness, testimony, evidence, witness of people, restore, duplicate, which duplicate is a derivative of, of course, to testify, give warnings, surround, to be restored, to say again and again, invoke solemnly warm and affirm. Does that sound like anybody to you guys in the new Testament revelation chapter 11, the two witnesses, which are your leaders of the remnant It talk. Jesus talks about the seven stars in his hand of the seven churches. And then you also have the seven churches themselves who God is calling people out of. So you have the leaders and the church. 
So if you look up the word two in the new Testament, two also means pairs in Luke chapter 10, Jesus sent the disciples out in two and twos pairs in the old Testament. It was Jewish custom to always send people out in pairs to have a witness. Okay. So we understand that revelation is written in apocalypsis, which means apocalyptic revelation writing, which is symbolic. So interesting. Remember your congregation, the gathering, the multitude. So the multitude, two witnesses, the church, the remnant church and its leaders. All right. Which you have purchased of old. Okay. The word old means in the beginning, ancient east toward the east. Now I have a note here to show you Genesis chapter one, verse one. The word beginning in Genesis chapter one, verse one means first fruits, which is the same as set apart, consecrated of God remnant. Okay. So I'm going to show you some verses, but let me also show you, uh, Genesis. I guess I'm going to have to do open up a new one here. Cause I didn't have this one open in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. Now I've shared with you all that the seven days of creation are also in the prophetic, the seven years of tribulation. If you do a word study prayerfully and deeply, it will reveal to you other things about the seven year or seven years of tribulation. Okay. So God says in the Bible, I have declared the end from the beginning. And sure enough, he does such as the word create in Hebrew means to make something out of nothing, but it also means to cut down. Interesting. All right. So in the beginning, so let's look at the word beginning. You can see here first fruits. That's one of the definition choice part, the best choicest choice, finest foremost. Okay. So you can see that, All right? Let me pull my document back up here. Well, actually, yeah, because we've got to look at a couple verses and I've got those pulled up. So let's look at Romans 8.23. It says, and not only this, but also we ourselves having the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. But each in his own order, Christ, the first fruits after that, those who are Christ at his coming. Okay. So Christ is the first fruits. And then after that, those who are Christ at his coming are also the first fruits. All right. This is James one verse 18 in the exercise of his will. He brought us forth by the word of truth so that we would be a kind of first fruits among his creatures. And then Revelation 14, four, these are the ones talking about the remnant who have not been defiled with women. Now, symbolically, because Revelation is symbolic, everybody for the most part's looking for a bunch of virgin unsaved Jews, the men. Okay. You can go to Joel chapter two and see that it's women, men, children It's not just men. The word virgin here or not defiled with women means that they are not part of the apostasy. They've even, they, they have either come out of it and repented or they've never been part of it at all. Okay. So what, what does it mean when it says a bride who's virtuous and white and clean and spotless and without wrinkle, she's a virgin. She's ready for her, her groom for they have kept themselves chaste. These are the ones who follow the lamb wherever he goes. These have been purchased from among men as first fruits to God and to the lamb and no lie was found in their mouth. They don't have any of the apostasy in them. They are blameless. All right. So now I'm going to put the notes back on the screen. I wanted to show you what the Bible had to say about first fruits. Cause I like to back up everything I say there. So it says, which you have purchased of old. So pointing us to the remnant, the first fruits consecrated of God, which you have redeemed 
this is interesting, purchased, delivered, or ransomed. We just read about how they were purchased from the earth to be the tribe. Now, the word tribe here is referring to Judah, and I'll show you how. The definition is rod, staff, spear, scepter, branch off, stick for punishing, club of shepherds, implement, mark of authority, clan, tribe, dart. Okay, so if we look at Psalm 89, you're going to see that this is talking about the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah, the word Judah is praise, but it's also rooted in the definition of an archer, arrows, bows, spears, scepter, the scepter of Judah, the Bible says, the rod, the staff. We know Jesus Christ is of the tribe of Judah. So let's look at Psalm 89, three through four real quick. I will sing of the loving kindness of the Lord forever to all generations. I will make known your faithfulness with my mouth. Interesting. Who's the word Jesus for I have said, loving kindness will be built up forever in the heavens. You will establish your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your seed forever and build up your throne to all generations. The heavens will praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness also in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies is comparable to the Lord, who among the sons of the mighty is like the Lord, a God greatly feared in the council of the holy ones and awesome above all those who are around him. O Lord, God of hosts, who is like you, O mighty Lord, your faithfulness also surrounds you. You rule the swelling of the sea when its waves rise, you still them. Interesting, that's prophetic of if you remember Jesus was on the boat with the disciples and he calmed the sea. But we look at this also prophetically, the sea represents the entire world system with all the multitudes of people. And you think about the swelling of the sea, you think about pride, you think about wickedness you rule. In other words, you're God over all. You have the final say in the last word. When its waves rise, you still them. You yourself crushed Rahab like one who is slain. You scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. So we know that right now, Satan has dominion over the earth because he's called the God of this world. And he is the God of the world with a little G. Okay, because until Jesus Christ returns, Jesus comes back and redeems it. Okay, but right now, until Jesus returns, Satan is the God of the world, not of us. We're separate. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. So ultimately, even though Satan has dominion over the earth, ultimately, it's because God has allowed this. God is God. He's God of all. The world and all it contains, you have founded them, the north, the south, you've created them, Tabor and Herman shout for joy at your name. You have a strong arm, your hand is mighty, your right hand is exalted. Who's at the right hand of God? Jesus. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Loving kindness and truth go before you. How blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. Oh Lord, they walk in the light of your countenance. We're supposed to walk in the light of the countenance of Jesus Christ. In your name, they rejoice all the day. We are to rejoice in his name all the day, even when we see bad things happening in the world. And by your righteousness, they are exalted, for you are the glory of their strength. And by your favor, our horn is exalted, for our shield belongs to the Lord and our King to the Holy One of Israel. Once you spoke in vision to your godly ones and said, I've given help to one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found David, my servant with my holy oil. I have anointed him with whom my hand will be established. My arm also will strengthen him. The enemy will not deceive him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him, but I shall crush his adversaries before him and strike those who hate him. My faithfulness and my loving kindness will be with him. And in my name, his horn will be exalted. I shall also set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He will cry to me. You are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I also shall make him my firstborn, 
the highest of the kings of the earth. Prophetically, this is talking about Jesus Christ. I'm sure most of you have picked up on that. My loving kindness I will keep for him forever. My covenant shall be confirmed to him. So I will establish his descendants forever in his throne as the days of heaven. If his sons forsake my law, okay, this is talking about Judah, and do not walk in my judgments, if they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Now, some translations say I will beat them. In other words, so we understand, most people are aware, understand that the remnant are indeed predestined, okay, that the Bible talks about it, the New Testament comes straight up and says it, Matthew Henry even has comment, commented on that in commentaries. So the remnant are predestined. It doesn't mean they have things easier. It means when they step out of line or walk off track, God's going to beat the tar out of them to get them back on track and go after them. Okay. I know myself in life that when God chastens after you, it's, uh, it's not very much fun. Trust me. It's best just to, <laughs> just to walk with the Lord. But I will not break off my loving kindness from him, nor deal falsely in my faithfulness. Now you're going to recognize something here in a few moments from Revelation. My covenant, I will not violate, nor will I alter the utterance of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His descendants shall endure forever. That means like perpetual there forever. And his throne as the sun before me it shall be established forever like the moon and the witness in the sky is faithful where do we see that revelation 12 verse 1 the woman clothed in the sun standing on the moon and she's got a crown with the 12 stars the 12 tribes of israel but you have cast off and rejected you have been full of wrath against your anointed now and the rest of the passage I'm going to share with you when we go back, you're going to recognize some of what King David is saying here and the rest of what I have to share with you. So I'm going to go ahead and share the rest of this. You have spurned the covenant of your servant. You have profaned his crown in the dust. You've broken down all his walls. You brought his strongholds to ruin. All who pass along the way plunder him. He has become a reproach to his neighbors. You have exalted the right hand of his adversaries. You have made all his enemies rejoice. You also turn back the edge of his sword and have not made him stand in battle. You have made his splendor to cease and cast his throne to the ground. You have shortened the days of his youth. You have covered him with shame. How long, O oh Lord, will you hide yourself forever? Will your wrath burn like fire? Okay, so in what we're reading right now, when I go back to it, he begins asking him, will you hide yourself from us forever? Will your judgment be against us forever? And it talks about the fire as well, but we haven't gotten to that yet. Remember what my span of life is for what vanity you have created all the sons of men. What man can live and not see death? Can he deliver his soul from the power of Sheol? Or in this context, Sheol means grave. Where are your former loving kindness, O Lord? which you swore to David in your faithfulness. So part of this thing with the sun and the moon is referring also to a covenant or an oath going back to King David, the God and King David made. So the sun represents Jesus. And it also represents the tribe of Judah, David's throne. The moon represents the oath. Remember when I just read to you, up here a little ways uh his descendants shall endure forever and his throne as the sun before me it will be established forever like the moon and the witness in the sky is faithful all right so now let's go back to my notes okay so it says uh we've got to remember which you have redeemed purchased delivered ransomed to be the tribe broad staff spear scepter branch uh, shepherd's implement, mark of authority, clan, tribe, dart. Okay. So I just shared Psalm 89, three through, or actually much more than three through four, practically the whole thing about God's oath to King David regarding his bloodline. 
Okay, so which you have redeemed to be the tribe of your inheritance. Now, inheritance means to take possession. This is interesting. To divide for possession. What do we see going on right now? Division. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace, but to bring a sword. The sword represents division. Matthew uh, chapter 13 talks about Jesus dividing the wheat and the tares and gathering for the harvest. Okay. So to cause to inherit inheritance, where am I? Okay, here we go. To divide, divide for possession, to cause to inherit inheritance. And this Mount Zion, where you have dwelt. Now, a mountain would represent a leader, okay, like high up to be um, elevated, somebody who's been elevated. So that's in the word studies. Zion, where you have dwelt. Zion is the way they used to say Jerusalem. Zion is Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the teaching of peace. Jerusalem is also rooted in arrows, archery, and casting arrows and things like that. So in this Mount Zion where you have dwelt, so symbolically, prophetically, we're pointing us to Jesus. Turn your footsteps now. I want you guys to make a note of this because it's going to be important when we get to Revelation chapter six about the opening of the seals. The footsteps represent his judgment. Footsteps means stroke, hoof beat, occurrence, time, agitate, trouble, push, impel, disturb, to be beaten. Okay, we're going to look at Genesis chapter one in a second again. So now remember, I just talked to you about God declaring the end from the beginning, the seven days of creation, seven years of tribulation. We know that the word earthquake and revelation means disturbance, shaking, agitating, and things like that. So we know there's something pointing us to disturbance and agitation in these end times. So let's take a look at Genesis chapter one again, I think, is that what I have here? Okay. We're going to look at the word expanse. Remember seven days of creation, seven years of tribulation. So expanse, the visible arch of the sky, the firmament, right? You see that? Okay. So let's look at what else it means though. It also means to beat out, to hammer out, to beat, beaten. God's judgment, beating out, stamping out, pounding out. Okay. So expanse prophetically. So in its first fold, this word expanse talking about his seven days of creation is talking about the visible arch in the sky. Well, there is something an arch and an arc are very much so related a R C arc and an arc is in a shape, a bow, an archer, you know, archery, they're all kind of related there. So that's kind of an interesting thing to note too, but pounding out, beating out, hammering out. Okay. All right. So turn your footsteps. So turn your judgment, pounding out, beating out hoof beats toward the perpetual perpetual means permanent. The perpetual ruins ruins means desolation laid waste like the abomination of desolation. Remember when you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place where it ought not to be, let the reader understand. Then it tells you to flee, you know, basically go into prayer, um, keep working for the Lord and teaching the truth. We'll go over the word studies of that passage sometime, not today. And the heart, as I showed you in the very first study we, we've been doing on this, and I proved to you your heart, so your, your rib cage are the walls of the temple, your lungs are the breath, your spirit, and your heart is the seat of your will, your emotion, the seat of God. Your heart is the temple of God in the shape of his holy sacred name, the sheen. And we know that in the Old Testament, they carried the spirit of God in a large golden chest as we've gone over, but repeating that for any new people here who didn't hear that. Okay, so 
the perpetual ruins, per perpetual, permanent ruins means desolation. Desolation. The enemy has damaged everything within the sanctuary. Sanctuary means to be holy, separate, consecrated thing, holy, set apart, sacred, separatedness. Your adversaries have roared. Your adversaries have ro roared in the midst. Now, in the midst means the middle or the heart. Now, here it's referencing the middle of tribulation. Okay. Your adversaries have roared in the midst. In the midst means heart, which I could pull. It says pull up the definition to show the people. The second definition means to bring near, approach, draw near, which seems to define the next few words of your meeting place. Okay. So your adversaries have roared in the midst of your meeting place. So here it's referring to middle, okay? And it also means your meeting. The word meeting means appointed time, sacred season, feast, assemble, betroth, summon, assemble, gather, assemble by appointment. My note, in the middle of tribulation, in the midst of your appointed time, midpoint fourth year of passover that's what it's pointing us to here your adversaries have roared in the midst of your meeting place they have set up their own standards standards means mark standards signs beacon omen mark miracles tokens banner warning proof also means to come into agreement or to consent. They have set up their own standards for signs. It seems as if one had lifted up his axe. Axe means to anticipate, disappoint, strike, hasten, prevent, to go before, go in front of, or be in front of, or to proceed. Could this be pointing us to how the Antichrist makes his appearance before Jesus returns? also striking. It seems as if one had lifted up his ax in a forest. Forest means to interweave, wrap, tangle, interwoven, fold together. Now we know in the sixth uh, seal, it says the sky rolls up like a scroll. And we also know that here in the beast system and the sea of people, we're all mixed together with the world, the apostates, the unbelievers. In a forest, forest means interweave, wrap, tangle, interwoven, interwoven, fold together, thicket of trees. Trees usually is referring to people in the Bible. Okay, trees. To fasten, close the eyes, shut. Firmness, staff, stick, timber, carpenter, firewood, cedar wood. And now all its carved work, the idols that they have made, reminds me of the word Mark in Revelation 13. It talks about it, talks about carved with the hands, idolatry. They smash with a hatchet. Now, this is really interesting. Hatchet means totter, waver, to fall, cast down, make to fall, feeble, ruin, overthrow, be weak, stumble, stagger, totter, bring injury, bereave. Uh, my note, falling away, blaspheming the Holy Spirit is what I feel that's pointing us to. And hammers, hammers means to clap or strike with a noise. They have burned, the word burned here, now there's two different burned in this particular passage. One of the terms burned literally means fire, to be burned. But this one means to be divorced loose send away and to loose all right so we discussed how in revelation 5 the scroll that jesus is holding in which he removes the seals in revelation 6 is called a bill of divorcement in greek bill of divorcement the word apostasy is rooted in the word bill of divorcement so they have divorced god they have burned to be divorced, loose, sent away to loose your sanctuary, their heart. They have divorced the Lord in their heart and their temple, totally divorced him. Temple, holy place, consecrated thing, tabernacle, to be holy, consecrated, set apart, dedicated, separate, sanctified. 
to the ground. What comes out of the earth? The second beast, Revelation 13, the beast of the earth. The word ground means the earth, the wilderness. Okay, the false prophet. And we have to remember a false prophet is someone who prophesies falsely. Okay, there are certain people, people think the false prophet is, and those people don't prophesy. The false prophet must fulfill the definition of a false prophet. The false prophet is the great apostasy in itself. And I know there are some verses further in Revelation that says these two. And when we get to that, I'll explain it at some point. All right. They have defiled or profane, desecrated, wounded, polluted, violated, violated a covenant, dishonored, profane the name of God, which can be the Holy Spirit. The word God in Greek is also referring to, can refer to Jesus, God, the head or the Holy Spirit, pierce, slain, wounded. By the way, wounded can mean public calamity. Interesting is said to play the flute or the pipe. Who plays the flute or the pipe? Pan. You guys, I'm, I'm sure have seen Pan. Is it represents Satan? It's the false god that is seen. Um, trying to figure out where it was at. There's one of these at the base of Mount Hermon in Israel, and it has a goat's body and the face of a man, and is playing the flute. Okay, Pan. That is where they get the word pandemic. Who is Satan? He's Satan. He shepherds his people with fear to their death. Thus, the word pandemic, pandemonium, etc., is derived from Pan, who is Satan. Rubbed or worn, afflicted, sick, make sick, a sore. Remember the loathsome sore on people in Revelation? It means to make people sick, people who are afflicted. The people who've taken the mark have a sore. It's not people are looking for people with boils on their skin. It's not necessarily an actual sore. It means afflictions and sick. To become diseased, become weak or sick, become ill, to make oneself sick, to be made sick, to, be, to make sore, to show signs of sickness, grieve, to be wounded, writhe in labor. Revelation 12, the woman in labor. Um, I think it's a Matthew as a woman in labor. You have lots of terms, the labor pains, the opening of the seals. Okay. Dance, pervert and bear. Okay. So they have defiled or profaned the dwelling place of your name, which is the human heart, your temple and your body. Again, the human heart is in the shape of the sacred name of God, the sheen, which is El Shaddai. This is the dwelling place of his name, the temple of God within us. The Bible also says he has written his law within our hearts, the 10 commandments. We're not talking about Mosaic law here. We're talking about the 10 commandments. Those are the laws of Jesus Christ, the dwelling place of your name. They said in their heart, let us completely subdue. Subdue means rage or be violent, pride, suppress, vex, treat violently, maltreat. Let us completely subdue them. They have burned. Now here's the different burn. This actually means fire. They have burned, set on fire, burned up, burning all of the meeting places of God in the land. What does meeting place mean? Appointed times, season, sign, or signal, tent, or meeting to appoint, assign, designate, assemble, gather, assemble by appointment. So again, this is all pointing us to God's people at midpoint during the time when the temple has been completely destroyed, the temple of God, not all of us, of course, but these apostates are destroyed. The devil, Satan is causing the destruction of the temple of God, which are humans. Okay. We know that we are all stones of the temple. A lot of people are looking for a temple. That's a physical temple that gets rebuilt at midpoint over in Israel. Well, they, there may very well be a temple that does get rebuilt. That wouldn't surprise me, but the temple that the Bible is talking about, and the Bible is very specific and clear about it is 
all of the stones with Jesus as the chief cornerstone and repentance, all the full number God has been waiting for is saved. They have repented. They're saved. You can read about that in revelation chapter seven, when they're sealed. So I'll explain this for those who haven't been here and other teachings but all of us who are saved are already sealed. The Bible says the seal of our salvation is the Holy spirit. There's not some mass sudden boom, 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 boom. Everybody's sealed. So all throughout the first half of tribulation, people are getting sealed at midpoint. The full number is reached that God is waiting on. Okay. So I'm sealed right now already. You guys are sealed already, but at midpoint, all the people who need to repent, you see, God is stripping people right now of the reliance on the flesh. People are hearing the truth. Some, okay. And these people are repenting. So when that full number gets reached, people think the gospel has been heard all over the world and every nation. No, it hasn't. The apostate gospel has, which is a corrupt, false teaching. The NAR movement are the ones who have reached people all over the world with the lies of Jesus Christ, which isn't even the real Jesus Christ is being taught. It's basically the devil, the antichrist with the name Jesus slapped on it to deceive people. It's not the real Jesus of the Bible. Their teaching isn't the real teaching from the Bible. The spirit is not the true Holy Spirit. So many of you've heard the Kundalini spirit, but the Bible calls it antichrist spirit. Okay. So we do not see our signs. There is no longer any prophet, nor is there any among us who knows how long. So this is obvious that it is speaking of the first half of tribulation during the judgment of God's people. The Bible says we shall see the sign of the son of man coming with great power and glory on the clouds. We don't see any indication of Jesus return. All the prophets are false and no one can tell us when Christ will return. That's my summary of what it is trying to say to us there. So it's seven 55. So we'll stop. That's a good place to stop. There's a little bit left. Some cool things I want to show you when I come back on week after next, I know that was really deep and hard to follow with all of my notes, but trust me when I say to you, it's hard to teach too. So, but I want to show you guys how that one little passage, this is why Bible study is important. Look at the wealth of information pointing us to the end times. And that one little passage from the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms is full of end times prophecy. I encourage you all to study it. I encourage you to sing the Psalms during your praise and worship time, pray the Psalms. In fact, when Paul was telling us about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the new Testament didn't exist yet. He was referring specifically to the book of Psalms. The early church used to read, to read it aloud because a lot of people couldn't read. So if somebody would read it aloud. They would recite it. They would worship and pray the book of Psalms. They had some really supernatural experiences too. Those people knew how to pray. They knew how to worship. So I encourage you guys all to do that. But you can see that, and you guys have that in your notes that I had emailed out to you. Um, I don't think, uh, Mornay, is it? That's how you, from Mornay. I don't think you have the notes. I'll, <clears throat> I'll send them to you. But in the notes, I'll send a fresh copy because my fresh copy has all that stuff in it. And you guys want to kind of study that and see what you think in your spirit prayerfully, the Lord is showing you. I feel he's clearly showing us the judgment on the house of God. And he's showing us something, what happens at midpoint and so on and so forth. And this whole false prophet stuff and the antichrist and the mark and things like that. And I think it's really important. So let's go ahead since we're at the very end of the hour and do any questions or comments. If you have a question or a comment, raise your hand. Rudy. Okay. Rudy. And then Kimberly. Amen. Um, you know, I found it very fascinating. Um, how our heart has a shape of the sheen. And I wanted to remark on, um, 
you know, many times nature proves God. And what happened is over the weekend, I went out of town to visit some family. And my 97 year old aunt, um, she has dementia. She's been a Christian for as long as we can all remember. She may not remember your name. She may not remember places, states, or dates. But the one thing she can recite without any hesitation, without any stumbling, is the word of God. And it brought me back to Psalm 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hidden in my heart. And I realized the Lord showed us it's in your heart, not memorization. Because once it's hidden in your heart, it comes out of your mouth. As the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is, or from the fullness of the heart comes out of the mouth. So if we fill our heart with the word of God, that's the only thing that can flow out. Even if we have dementia, forgetfulness, amnesia. So it goes to show what Lynn is teaching us is true because I've seen it for myself. My 97 year old aunt, she can't remember my name. She called me everything else except for Rudy, but we were singing songs of praise and she remember all the songs, all the hymns, word for word. She knows the gospel of, of the Bible. You mentioned one thing and she can recite three or four or five verses bat to bat without stumbling, but that's because she hidden the word in her heart and you know, I thank God for your word study and for your research because it shows us we don't have to wait for scientists to tell us what God already told us in the word of God. You know, all we have to do is just dedicate a little bit more time to discover the things that you are showing us. And I thank God so very much for when we found you because I have tremendously benefited. Tamisha and I benefited tremendously, but definitely praise God for your teaching. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Rudy. That makes, it's always nice to feel, you know, I do get beat up a lot on social media because of my strong stand. So it's always encouraging and nice to have encouragement. God bless you for that. And that, I mean, that's what it's all about is blessing everybody and helping everybody to understand better. Kimberly, before you say what you're going to say, just let me real quick. This will take a second. I forgot. There's a gentleman here who wasn't here before. I forgot to show the picture of the heart on the screen. Let me just show that really super quick. Hold on. If I can remember where it was at, here we go. All right. So here is the heart. Now it's now I can't see it. So the name of God, the sheen, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse right here. And then you can see up here and let me just show a better picture. Okay. I don't know if you guys can all see this. So right here is the sheen, the little dots kind of cut off up there. That's part of it, but that's the sacred name of God, the sheen that means El Shaddai and the human heart is in the shape of the name of God. And in an earlier study we did on this whole thing I'm doing, we also had discussed that how the heart has the different chambers and so on and so forth. It talks about the groom coming out of his chambers, referring to Christ, which is also very interesting. So this picture here was pretty interesting, but that one's kind of cut off. I had a really good one. I wanted to show you all, but I can't show you. So that gives you the idea of the human heart. If there's anybody here who didn't know that, that it's very significant. Jerusalem is also in the shape of the sheen, the sacred name of God. All right. Kimberly, your turn now. Sorry about that. No, that, that was great because I was thinking we need to see the picture. So when you were talking about the abomination of desolation and also about the spirit of God being carried in the golden chest, and I had this thought that we are made in the image of God and we carry the spirit of God and we're kind of like that golden chest. And the abomination of desolation, one of the definitions you shared was mocking God. Let's see if I can keep my train of thought. And that to be burned was to be divorced of God in our heart. We could be divorced of God in our heart. So I'm just thinking that this abomination of desolation and this 
in these end times is that more of humanity that are being divorced from God because they have, oh shoot, I just lost the word, uh, profaned the spirit, blasphemed the spirit in their heart because Jesus is on the throne of our heart. And if we allow anything else, even fear on that throne, we are blaspheming or mocking God. That was two different definitions. Um, and that we have the judgment is on the house of God first. So he's, he's house cleaning at the same time. Oh, I'm just rambling now, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. I'm you know, sorry. I do. No, it's okay. And this stuff is hard for me to teach. Even you guys should be shocked that I don't sit here and ramble. Maybe sometimes I do and I don't notice, but um, it's so deep. It's, it's, it's just it's so very deep. deep and like you say, I, there's so many layers. Yeah. So the thing of it is, is all right. People during, we know that there's one sin and we talked about this the other week that you can't be forgiven for. And we know that's blaspheming the Holy spirit. Jesus said, blaspheme Jesus. You can be forgiven. Blaspheme God. You can be forgiven. Blaspheme anything. Basically you can be forgiven, but you blaspheme the Holy spirit strike. You're out. That's what it says. So blaspheming the Holy spirit is speaking evil of the Holy spirit. So let's say that let's say somebody, um, is convincing me that this antichrist spirit is the Holy spirit and they're calling it the Holy spirit. And I accept the antichrist spirit as the Holy spirit into my temple and ask it to come in. And, Cause I believe this false teaching and believe the lie. And it's actually an antichrist spirit. Remember antichrist simply means instead of, okay. I have blasphemed. I'm calling something evil. It's also blasphemous to call the Holy Spirit something evil. Either way, that's the only sin we can't be forgiven for. So my question that I still have, we know that we can't be forgiven for taking the mark of the beast, but the mark of the beast, according to how we've all been taught it is, isn't blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So why can't we be forgiven? So my point is, I'm still studying that, but I don't think it's what we have thought it was. And I think that's how so many people are going to be deceived. No, never put anything on or in your body. Let's just make a number one oath and pact that we're not doing that. So, you know, we're never going to put anything weird like that on or in our bodies, hands or foreheads. Okay. But in my research, it is symbolic of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And has to do with going after someone and casting a vote. So um, this is all very serious stuff. And right now, my whole point that I'm getting to is that Jesus right now is dividing and separating. That means this is a very serious time. Go through the churches. Remember, I did the churches. Each church is a stage of where the believers at during the first half of tribulation and some doesn't apply to everybody. That's why it will say to those of you who are in Thyatira, who have not known the deep things of Satan, this doesn't apply to you. Okay. So it's a stage, a period of where the church is at by Philadelphia. You can see what I'm saying. They're all feeling, they're all a little bit, you know, a little bit strong. You have a little strength. That's because that's nearing the end of the first half of tribulation. That's where God's people are at during the sixth church. And then you still have during the seven churches, the seventh church, you still have these people who are like lukewarm. They've kind of become lackadaisical. God says, Hey, you better be, you better repent or I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth which sounds like the um, wrath of God to me. I mean, to be vomited out of the mouth of God, I don't know what, I don't even want to know what that's like. But so this is a very important time period because Jesus is separating. Now I will tell you this in advance because we haven't made it to Revelation 6. So you understand the, the scroll he's holding is the bill of divorcement. This, the word seal is rooted in two words, fenced in, 
and heart. Fenced in and heart. Okay, ripping the seals off. He's exposing the hearts. Now remember, think of the seven churches, seven seals. He's warning each church pretty much, okay? Except for two. Well, there is a warning to Philadelphia. The warning of, to Philadelphia is you better be careful you don't lose your crown. You know, we're right here at the end. Stay strong. So he's ripping the seals off the hearts of the people. And these events are happening. The horses represent judgment. Different, the horse, not the horse. The horse represents God's judgment and what he's doing to judge. There's a lot of symbolism. So seals, hearts. And what's Jesus talk about in Matthew 13? This is why I say it's important. In Matthew 13, he's gathering the wheat into his barn, storehouse. And he's gathering the tares, bundling them up to be burned up in the fire. Okay, so this is a very important time period that all of us need to search our hearts and seek the Lord and get into his word. And I know I keep pounding that into everybody. Me sitting here telling you about it is not enough because you can tell Joe Blow and Joe Blow will say, well, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Look here. And then he's following some corrupt teaching. And then it doesn't matter what I say. What matters is that you study the word of God prayerfully on your own. And I'll give you a quick example of something to do with corrupted teachings. So if somebody tells you every day, that you're fat and you're ugly every day. Let's say you thought you were nice looking and let's say you're not fat, but every day somebody says you're fat and you're ugly, you're fat and you're ugly every day. You will begin to believe you're fat and ugly or see yourself that way. If somebody has taught you stuff from the scriptures, that's false, but has a little bit of truth in it. For years, you've been brainwashed to where now you can sit down and read it and you're going to see that which you have been deceived with. You're still going to see the deception. So all of us need to ask God to purge everything from our mind and to ask the Lord to teach you as you go through it, get yourself a nice big package of some Holy Ghost x lax and clean all that garbage out, do something because otherwise it's going to be difficult. So I'm just urging everyone to study the word of God, do away with your books, do away with your commentaries, do away. Now I know some of you, cause I talked to some of you are still watching stuff that you shouldn't be watching. I just want to remind you, and I don't mean anything bad. I'm talking about worldly political nonsense or, or, um, sensationalism stuff or a focus on politics. Let me just tell you, or, or maybe some of you are watching some of those apostate teachers still because they have a good message once in a while. The Bible says that a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, but a bad tree cannot bear good fruit and that you're supposed to know the difference. And when you see a bad tree bearing bad fruit, you don't have anything to do with it. I don't care if, if they say five sentences that are true. And let me tell you why. That is the devil himself. The great apostasy is the spirit of antichrist. And if you think you have outsmarted the devil, he will know how to lure you right back into a false teaching. So I'm, you know, I'm not your guys' mother, but I will warn you, be careful who you're listening to and what you watch. And I will tell you up front, a lot of these people y'all are watching that you think have the truth and whatever don't a lot of them are part of the apostasy and are sold out so pay attention to that and pray about it okay i'll keep trying to direct you guys in the right way all right does anybody have one final quick thought or question because i'm sure you guys are all antsy to go do something okay we have I just to go. go ahead just one quick question do you think that they um realize um because i know i was looking at something about billy graham do you think that they know that they're sold out necessarily i think some of them do but i think there's some who don't okay so let's say kenneth copeland for example 
when the Bible tells us wolves and sheep's clothing, we kind of tend to take that lightly in our mind. It's somebody who's deceived. No, there are people who are intentionally sent in by the Satanist or the Luciferians to the Jude tells us that they've crept in unaware who know that they're evil, who know that they worship and honor Satan, who are there to intentionally deceive the people. We got to start remembering how smart the devil is. We think we've outsmarted him and we've thought that for years. He knows just how to deceive. And the best way I can deceive any of you, if I was the devil, would be to make you look at something else and to make obvious things happen. So you'll look right here. Meanwhile, Mr. Kitty's back there in the background, sneaking around, getting into stuff while you're looking at me on the screen. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's what magicians do when they mm. want to trick you. So you guys, we all need to start looking at the less obvious. Everyone's looking at Pope's Biden, Obama still for crying out loud. Everyone's looking at the obvious Muslims, everything that is not what's going to deceive God's people. So start looking at the less obvious. And yeah, I think to answer your question, I think most of them who are high up, they know exactly who and what they are. They know they're devils, but then you have your people who are uh, following it, who won't listen and they won't pay attention and they're blinded. Like um, your favorite, like my, you know, my favorite singer used to be um, Lauren Daigle and Oh, new age. It's all new age. Yeah. But you don't know that. I mean, I went to her concert and I thought, oh, I know she loves Jesus. How could you not think that? But then I just saw a thing about her, about mysticism and she's ready to reset. And I just sobbed, you know, and I realized that she, but I thought, does she know that she's caught up in some things that yeah, you know, of course they know they're a lot of them are deceived. Most of your Christian musicians aren't real Christians. I mean, I've even known some big ones that I knew personally. Most of them are not. So, all right, let's say a closing prayer. Thank you to everybody who commented. God bless all of you who showed up. A lot of people aren't showing up lately. I'm sure they've got things they got to do, or they know they're going to have to sit for over an hour. Either one, I don't know. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> Hey, um, I had a uh, text message. Uh, Chelsea asked everyone to pray for her. She has a terrible migraine headache and she needs prayer. So I wanted to throw that in. Okay. I'll say that first. So I don't forget because the way my mind okay. works, I could forget. All right. So everybody mute just for a moment. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just also pray for Chelsea father that you help her with her, uh, the headache. So I just thank you and praise you that you just bring her healing and comfort from any of her pain. And Lord, just thank you and praise you for all the people we prayed with at the start of this message, Lord, that you're taking care of it. We walk by faith, not by sight. And we believe wholeheartedly that your will ultimately will be done in all things. So father, we just thank you and praise you. And we just pray for our loved ones who are unsaved, our loved ones who have walked away, Lord. We pray for them that you move mightily, mightily within them, Lord, to just bring them to repentance, bring them to that place of repentance and the confession of the true Jesus Christ, Lord, of the Holy Bible. You know, these apostates have already in one sense made with their hands, their rendition of Jesus or antichrist father. And it's not the Jesus of the Bible. Lord, we just thank you and praise you that you're just moving on that. We can take, take comfort in knowing that you're doing that. Lord, as we go out through this week, we just pray that you're with each and every one of us, even those who aren't here, everyone who watches this message, and even people who do not. Father, we just thank you that you are with everyone and you are opening their eyes and opening their ears. And we pray for for our friends, Lord, and family, and just people in the world in general who are caught up in the deception right now, that they would see the truth and that people will begin to realize that we're not supposed to partake in worldly flesh rebellion, Lord. We are supposed to fight the way Jesus Christ told us to fight. And it's not in the flesh, Lord. Help people to see this. Rebellion on any level is not of you. 
Father. It's not of you at all. In fact, the word rebellion is defined as apostasy and divorcement. It's also witchcraft. So, Father, I thank you and praise you that if we're told or asked to do something that goes against your word, then we do what the disciples did. We do what Jesus has shown us. We just go ahead and we peacefully decline and, and suffer the punishment. Or the whole Bible is about suffering. Unfortunately, we're going to have to suffer some, some of us more than others. But Lord, here's what I pray that you just give us the strength to endure. Give us the strength as things are being yanked away from us, Lord. Let us let go of flesh rights. We don't have flesh rights. As I said in a recent video, the only right we have is to go to hell. But through your grace, your love, and your mercy, you sent Jesus Christ to die for us so that we could accept him as our savior and truly follow him and truly give up the flesh. Lord, and truly be saved. Your word says no flesh can enter the kingdom of heaven. Help us to let go of the flesh. Help us to stop fighting for flesh rights, Lord. Because if people keep crying for their flesh rights, you're going to give it to them. And the flesh rights are eternal death and damnation and the pits of hell. Help us to praise you despite all, all things that are happening that are negative, Lord. In Revelation 11, your people, the remnant, are standing there giving praise after 7,000 people just died in an earthquake. And they witnessed it, Lord. So just thank you and praise you, Father, that you are helping us to stand strong and to be firm, Lord, and to walk in the light and the truth of Jesus Christ and to be a light to others. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, amen and amen and amen. All right, God bless all of you. Have a lovely week and stay true to the Lord and don't get down by anything that happens. Just give him praise and get through it and know the Lord is with you even though you don't feel him or see him or hear him, okay?